What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Let me guess it for you. It would probably be oil, money and of course, the scorching hot deserts. Saudi Arabia has been through some serious transformations in the past decade but, one of the biggest accomplishments of Saudi Arabia in the past few years is agriculture and farming. In this video we will talk about how Saudi Arabia turned its deserts into fertile grasslands. Saudi Arabia, a desert country that saw its fortune skyrocket due to the discovery of oil, uses its billions of petrodollars to fuel the country's economy and to improve its citizens' lives. But being an oil-rich desert nation is not as easy as it looks. One of the major facets in the country is its food supply. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia imports more than 80% of its necessary food supplies, because 95% of Saudi Arabia is a scorching hot desert and dry and fertile land. Only about 1.5% of the land area of Saudi Arabia is arable, and the agriculture the country does, has ended up taking over 80% of the kingdom's precious water supply, which made farming in Saudi Arabia a crucial area of interest for the Saudi government, who wished to expand kingdom's sustainability and shore up potential risks if global food supply network crashes. Outside the Fertile Crescent, farming in the Arab East is a perpetual contest between man and nature. On most of the Arabian Peninsula, one of the most arid regions on Earth, rainfall is scant. Yet Saudi Arabia, the largest and driest country on the peninsula is turning into an agricultural giant in the region through advanced and innovative technologies. Even though Saudi Arabia is a country that doesn't have any permanent rivers and has an average of 4 to 5 inches of rainfall a year, and much of it runs off into the desert sands or quickly evaporates, still it exports vegetables, fruits, grains and dairy products all around the world. Saudi Arabia is one of the largest wheat exporters in the world. The impact of agricultural reform in Saudi Arabia has been huge for the kingdom. For perspective, in 1961 it had 11,400 square kilometers of arable land comprising 0.5% of the country, and in 2016 it has almost 35,000 square kilometers which is triple the size of fertile land as compared to 60 years ago. But it's remarkable how Saudi Arabia transformed its deserts into fertile land and how it produces let alone export agricultural products with only about 1.5% arable land. If we notice on the maps there is something interesting going on in this country, as there are a lot of huge circular greenery spread out along the desert all across the country and even in the middle of the desert. Well, those green circles are not just for making the deserts look pretty, these are actually farmlands. More specifically, center pivot irrigation farms. This is an agriculture technology in which a movable pipe structure rotates around a central pivot point connected to a water supply. Center pivot irrigation systems are the most popular sprinkler irrigation systems in the world because of their high efficiency, high uniformity, ability to irrigate uneven terrain, and low capital, maintenance, and management costs. The non-renewable fossil water which is available one kilometer below the ground level is mined and pumped is used to irrigate the fields using center pivot irrigation. The engineers determine the underground river channels which are now buried under the sand seas. The center pivot irrigation system however is less efficient in terms of production as reservoirs in Saudi Arabia are mostly drained out. The western side of Saudi Arabia is majorly occupied by the mountains and most rains fall on the western slopes and flow back to the sea unused. To get rid of this problem, Saudi Arabia launched the initiative, Rehabilitation of Agricultural Terraces and Rainwater Harvesting Techniques in the Southwest of Saudi Arabia. The technique of harvesting rainwater provides large quantities of water for use in agriculture as the agricultural terraces are considered a water barrier which prevents the water to flow down in the sea through the slopes, and through which rainwater is collected and from there, it seeps into nearby wells, and then it is used for agriculture. The rainwater harvesting is done through the construction of concrete tanks to harvest rainwater, as well as small dams that are barns to slow down the flow of water and collect water passing through valleys after the rains to irrigate the crops in the terraces. If this project is spread to the entire western part of Saudi Arabia, the whole region, which is more than 121,000 square kilometers, could be transformed into fertile agricultural land. It's quite significant that this area is bigger than the Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland and Denmark. 
This will cost billions of dollars in time but the agricultural capacity of Saudi Arabia will grow by at least six times. Another latest agriculture technology which can make farming easy in places like Saudi Arabia is liquid nanoclay or LNC. Norwegian scientist Christian Morten Olesen has patented a process to mix nanoparticles of clay with water and bind them to sand particles to condition desert soil. The LNC treatment gives sand particles a clay coating which completely changes their physical properties and allows them to bind with water. Natural clay is mixed with water and then inserted into the sand which creates half a meter layer into the soil that turns the sand into good fertile soil. This process doesn't involve any chemical agents. It can transform any poor quality sandy soils into high yield agricultural land in just seven hours. Normal sand particles are very loose, which means that they have a very low water retention capacity. But when liquid nanoclay is added to the sand it binds those sand particles together, which means it can hold water for longer, increasing the possibility of agricultural yield. This technology has been tried in the UAE, and surprisingly it saved consumption of water by more than 50%. Desert Control says initially it will target municipal governments and commercial growers, but eventually would like to make the cost accessible to all growers. Saudi Arabia may be short of rainwater but it is not at all short of seawater. Its extensive coastlines on the Persian Gulf and Red Sea gives the kingdom access to unlimited amounts of seawater. But as we all know seawater is salty, and can't be used for the purpose of agriculture, farming or drinking. So, they came up with a solution, desalination. Saudi's eastern coast not only hosts the record-breaking Al Jubail plant, but also the world's largest plant using more modern hybrid desalination technology, at Ras Al Khair. These plants serve east coast cities and also pipe desalinated water 400 kilometers into the desert to the 7 million residents of the capital city of Riyadh. But the problem with desalination is, it is expensive, energy intensive and is not environment friendly as useful minerals such as sodium chloride salt, magnesium and calcium are extracted from the seawater alongside clean water, and the wastewater, known as brine, flows back into the sea. Saudi Arabia's transformation is not limited to fruits and vegetables, aimed at reducing the kingdom's dependence on oil and to diversify its economy, and as part of its Saudi Vision 2030 goal, the Saudi Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture is encouraging local poultry farmers to increase production. The country produced 900,000 metric tons of chicken meat in 2020, accounting of 60% of domestic consumption with estimates near 1.5 million metric tons for next year. MEWA expects local production to account for 80% by 2025 and 100 by 2030. Almarai, the largest Saudi dairy farm and the third largest chicken meat producer, recently announced a massive poultry expansion plan at a cost of $1.8 billion, which will double its poultry production over the next five years. Investments in dairy farming have been equally successful. Saudi Arabia's dairy industry is booming thanks to Al Safi Dairy Farm the largest in the world. Conceived in the 1970s in the midst of the oil embargo, Al Safi is twice as large as the largest American dairy farm and houses 37,000 cows that produce more than 58 million gallons of milk a year. Entirely self-sufficient and operational year-round, Al Safi thrives in the middle of the desert. To protect the cattle from the summer heat, pens are equipped with air droplet cooling fans and special awnings. This innovation comes at a high cost, in water-scarce Saudi Arabia, it takes nearly 2,300 gallons of water to produce one gallon of milk, nearly three times the amount required for production in the United States. Not just that, in 2008, to feed its growing population, King Abdullah launched an initiative for Saudi agricultural investment abroad, urging Saudis to go overseas and buy land. Saudi investors have since spent billions of dollars buying up or leasing large farmlands around the world. Saudi firms control rice farms in Ethiopia, Sudan and the Philippines, cattle ranches in California and Arizona, wheat fields in Ukraine and Poland, ranches in Argentina and Brazil, and shrimp producers in Mauritania. However, the Saudi policy has not gone so smoothly. Critics are accusing Saudi Arabia of participating in a global land grab, using their unimaginable wealth in a bid to perform industrial-scale farming practices on what are usually traditional, mixed-crop, smallholder plots of land. Increased drought, 
deforestation and intensive farming methods are turning an area half the size of Britain into desert every year. According to the United Nations, by 2030, 135 million people could lose their homes and livelihoods to desertification. That raises the challenge of how to grow food in increasingly hostile conditions, but these advanced agri-techs used by Saudi Arabia and other desert countries might become the game-changer in future. What are your thoughts about farming in deserts? Tell us in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.